Welcome back. We are now in the foothills of the Colorado Rockies, and you may be wondering what we're doing here. Well, it turns out a lot of the technology you use for your cable company, including some of the technology you're using right now, got its start not too far from here. Big clunky buttons and dials. In case you're not old enough to remember, this used to be what passed for a television remote control. And a big reason it evolved so quickly into what we use today is this place. Located just outside Denver, Colorado, it's called Cable Labs. The largest cable companies around the world got together and about 23 years ago created this research and development lab to devise new cutting edge technologies for all cable companies to use in order to A, do more for you, the cable customer, and as a result, B, get a leg up on the competition. The next big thing is what we're all about. The internet, the technologies of the internet, the technologies of the web, are really freeing the cable industry from all the restrictions of the, of the past, the, you know, the restrictions of the set-top box and everything. Today we're talking about extending very, very exciting services, interactive services, to uh, not only to televisions, but to smartphones, to tablets, to PCs, everything. Whether it's electronic gaming, whether it's you know, social networking, and on any of that, that's what cable is, going to, is becoming all about. One such example, this app that allows television shows to talk to your iPad in a sort of kind of way, so that, for example, if there's a product you like on the TV screen, you hit one button on your device and instantly get more information. We can actually, um, instead of cluttering the screen with, with more stuff, uh, we can basically redirect that advertisement or that interactivity to another device. The technology that Cable Labs develops is really, um, you know, it, it's meant to be universal. So whether somebody w would, you know, choose to, to do a, an advertisement with that technology or, or really enhance a, a program, it's, it's open-ended and, and really up to, you know, programmers and advertisers and whoever, whoever wants to take the technology and run with it. And proving cable means far more than just your TV service. This is new technology being rolled out now. By taking advantage of the internet and phone services you're already getting and adding on top of those, some cameras and sensors, cable companies are looking next to offer you home security and then some. We've uh, thought about um, home monitoring well beyond home security uh, into uh, what we call security monitoring and automation. And what that means is that in addition to having your system uh, you know, contact you if there's an alarm, um, it'll also contact you for normal events. So for example, if the front door opens and closes, you can get a text message knowing that your kid got home at 315. You can also set it up so that you get a text message if your elderly parent uh, you know, doesn't go into the kitchen by 10 a.m., for example. The whole uh, ability to automate your home um, and monitor it will lead to all sorts of capabilities that we can't even imagine today. Other areas you can soon expect to see advances from out of this facility. Everything from set-top boxes with new capabilities, like the ability to easily share what's on it with all your mobile devices, to turning the entire United States into one giant, nearly endless wireless internet Wi-Fi hotspot for you to access at any time. Now, of all the places we're telling you about in this special, without question, math is crucial to making it all work. And you may be thinking, but math is so boring. Well, it just so happens we may have found a place that could actually change your mind about that. Now, for some people, math just doesn't add up. But once they step inside the soon-to-be-opened Museum of Mathematics, they're likely to give math a spin. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old Anna Peterman sums up mathematics. Probably just the purest thing in the world. Math definitely is the basis of everything. It's the basis of even things like English and history. People say that math, that I was, I'm actually doing a poetry project in school, and people say that there's actually math behind poetry and the rhythm of the syllables, and I think it's amazing. Anna and her parents were among a few dozen people to get a behind-the-scenes tour of the future home of the Museum of Mathematics, or MoMAP set to open next year. We have laboratories for chemistry, we have laboratories for physics, you know, we have studio for art. All of these different, you know, fields have their means of getting the information across in a tactile, experiential way. Mathematics, by and large, is missing that. We want to put that element back in. 
The museum's founder, Glenn Whitney, a former mathematics professor who most recently built financial models at a hedge fund, wanted to give new meaning to playing with numbers through interactive exhibits like hoop curves. You can analyze your particular throw, you can compare that to how other people did, and you can try to figure out, well, what would be the ideal angle and velocity, and then you can set the ball box. We've got an uh, automatic uh, basketball cannon here. We can actually dial in the parameters that you think will provide the most reliable basket. Or you can step inside a hyperboloid to get a sense of how straight lines can create curved structures. Anna let her fingers do the math, following a particular pattern to build a geometrical gem out of light sticks. Uh, we created what's called a truncated dodecahedron, which is a mathematical shape. It's been known to mathematicians for centuries. And if you're a mathematician and you have knowledge of these shapes, they give you a kind of a storehouse, an inventory of forms that you can use in making all kinds of designs and sculptures. Adding up to an infinite amount of fun. Reporting for It Ain't Rocket Science, Shazia Khan. Go to Time Warner Cable's www.connectamillionminds.com to get plugged into science, technology, engineering, and math education in your community. We do have to take one more quick break. Coming up, though, see how a special group of kids grasped that green energy concept early on. And we'll have top inventor and entertainment industry icon James Cameron talk about the team it takes to put together some of the biggest blockbusters the world has ever seen. I work with, with soft, software engineers, coders, I work with well, mechanical engineers, uh, people that, that were, you know, were good at math, that were good at the sciences, because we're creating something, we're making something that's never existed before. You won't want to miss it. 